My name is Human Maj, and I've spent most of my life in the U.S., but in the last few years I've been returning to Iran for extended stays. I travel around the country, but spend most of my time in Tehran, the capital, where almost 20% of the population lives in a sprawling modern city. As a writer, as an Iranian, and as an American, I very much wanted to tell the story of Iran and its people as they are, warts and all, and not as we presume them to be. Here I am in Tehran in February 2007, hitching a ride on the back of a motorcycle to get around the city, which is notorious for its horrendous traffic jams and even worse drivers. I stay in South Tehran, which is the working class part of town, where you are likely to see a whole family packed four to a bike. This is where the more religious minded live, where one is reminded almost daily that Iran is an Islamic country, and where conservative politicians such as President Ahmadinejad find great support. Uptown, where I attend parties in private homes and am offered alcohol and marijuana, is where you see fashionable women on the streets testing the limits of the hijab and the modest dress laws. An undercurrent of Islam is evident almost everywhere in Iran. But what we think of as a theocracy is not always accurate. And what is striking for a visitor is how little fear there is among the population. There's no oppressive atmosphere or a sense that a secret police or a moral squad is watching the citizens every move. And most people go about their daily lives concerned more with economics than with the political situation. Women work, move about the city unescorted, and drive every bit as aggressively as their male counterparts, even taxicabs. Unless one is in the direct vicinity of a mosque, there's no audible call to prayer, and the city doesn't grind to a halt at the designated Muslim prayer times. There are lively political discussions everywhere Iranians gather. There are no bars, but the authorities rarely make any effort to curtail the lively black market in every imaginable alcoholic drink. The holy month of Muharram is when you see Islam, specifically Shia Islam, on its most extreme display. Men beat themselves to show their grief for the death of the martyr Hossein, Women wail and often hit themselves over the head, and even secular Iranians sometimes beat their chests in sympathy, as I do. For Iranians, being Shia means being burdened with a unique inferiority-superiority complex. Inferiority because Shias have always been the minority oppressed by the Sunni majority, and superiority because of a sincere belief that their version of Islam is the right and just one. Iranians' sense of being an oppressed minority gives them an exaggerated sense of what their rights are. Basic rights are, for Shia people, paramount. And this plays out strongly in the nuclear issue. Driving south from Tehran, about an hour away, in a series of buildings clearly visible from the highway, is the center of Iran's nuclear program. The drive to become a nuclear power, supposedly a peaceful one, has the support of Iranians of all political stripes. The nuclear issue feeds the Iranian inferiority-superiority complex in a way most foreign politicians cannot begin to understand. As I drive by these buildings in Natanz, I can't help but think that this is probably the U.S. Air Force's number one bombing target, should the nuclear confrontation between Iran and the U.S. spiral out of control. My hope in writing the Ayatollah begs to differ is that Iranians and Americans might come to understand each other a little bit better, so that it never will. <laughs>